this content is for kids. It's not for kids. No, isn't that what I said? No, it's not for kids. If oh. you are 13 years or younger, no. this is not for you. Do I have to kill somebody in order to actually make that point across? No, man, you don't have to kill Wait no a one. second. Oh, no, 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 no. If we return to our planet, the High Court may well sentence you to torture. Greetings! You're watching Septum Sin vs. the World. I'm Septum Sin. I'm here with Kotobuki Jake. Hi. And we're here to show you what they got. Yes. So uh, we've got some fun stuff uh, coming up here, and I'm going to go ahead to our board. Uh, as uh, mm -hmm. but before we get to the board, let's talk Gundam. There is none. No. So. Uh, with that being well, said... We do have some really long-running shows, though. We do. But we'll show you more of that after this. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, PDA select, start if you have a friend. And Lance gonna kick some ass. I want the spread shot, you take, take the, the fire. fire. Who wants the laser? I'd rather die. I'm spraying bullets, stay behind me. I'm spraying, spraying bullets, bullets, stay behind me. Boss battle. Well, I'm never selling, selling, I got contra for life. And I'm never selling, I got contra for life. I don't know why a point. There's there's no point. <laughs> Technically, during this. Hmm. Uh, but uh, anyway. it was an interesting thing. Now, uh, we never did determine who was going to go first this time. Uh, I do don't you believe have, we did. Uh, do you have any major showstopper waiting for you at the end of the uh, pickups this time around? I'm not sure that 
Was that? Because we actually are even a number this time. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure there's anything that's a showstopper. I can go either way. I've got a showstopper for the end, so I will let you start us off. <laughs> for the end of this one or for the end of the pickups? The pickups, which is why I'm saying you can start us off. Right. Okay. So on this one as well, then. Well, if you go first, then I'll – actually, you're right. Never mind. <laughs> That's what I was wondering because we usually alternate. Anyway. So, yeah, I'll go first then. Um, All right. So we're going to start with uh, one of the best films on here. Woohoo! Dog's Courage. Ooh. Which you can see over here. There's the uh, streaming version. Oh, come on. That? I don't think that's the same one. <laughs> Easy D. Ah, there it is. So, there you go. A Dog's Courage is an animated film that we've got going mm -hmm. here. I'm going to turn off my stuff here. Um, and, uh, well, let's see here. And, uh, actually... Hey Jake, would you uh, would you text uh, Dane that yes, we are having at eight fifteen. Vlogcast at eight fifteen on Monday, which is already passed in this group. Uh, but um, a dog's purpose, uh, of course, is I mean, courage, not purpose. <laughs> I, I'm thinking of a different set of films entirely. A bad Apparently. dog, Jacob. Oh, they named it after you. Uh, oh, okay. Can't accept his new way of life as a stray one, wandering around to figure out what to do and how to live. He meets a stray pack of dogs. One day he happens to bump into a wild dog, Kelly, and they decide to take a journey together to the to find ultimate freedom. So, have you heard about this one at all? Uh, this is my first time hearing. Of it. Well, like you said, you hear all that a dog's whatever, and you automatically think yeah. about that series. Um, I don't really know much about this at all. I do kind of like the groan-inducing tagline, but just because it's one of those things, it's like you see something that on the nose, and you, it has its own amusement value. <laughs> It's uh, it's kind of interesting to see. I, I mean, the art style kind of leads me to think that this might be a little bit more artistic, oh. but I don't know. It, it's hard I to say. I could use a black version about now. <laughs> but That's then, thrilled, yeah. <laughs> so uh, where would you rank? Actually, I guess I'll rank it as curious because I'm not 100% off of it, but... I just actually, no, no, I'm, I'm more on the meh level of this one. The art style, I, kind of like yeah. to go, but not quite. I have to admit, this one looks to me like it's probably going to be. Wait a minute. Oh, no wonder it's Well Go USA. This apparently actually is a Korean film. Did you huh. say that? And I just didn't hear you. No, uh, I didn't even know that. Uh, I've been reading. Yeah, it, I... and it co-stars Sodam Park, who's one of the, uh, who was the uh, the cute sister that uh, <laughs> meets with a rough end in uh, Parasite. Well, huh. yeah. so but, that uh, puts me that puts it up to curious. <laughs> yeah, the art style. I was close to curious, so I guess I yeah. will. I'm willing to boost it to curious. Yeah. Korean animation gets a little, yeah. But uh, let's see here. So you're up next. Okay, so just across the pond, we've got a Japanese animation. Uh, this one is called Koi wa amaigari no yoni, or which, of course, has the very different uh, English title of After the Rain. It's being released, I do believe, by Sentai Filmworks. Is that right? Oh, let's take a look. Yes, indeed. You can yep. see a little Sentai, Sentai Filmworks. And as you can tell from the cover art, it, it doesn't look quite like your typical series. It's apparently a cafe set series about a 
high school girl who's crushing on her manager who's considerably older so it's sort of like a maybe not a may december but like a may september sort of deal. <laughs> maybe a little bit on the uh, odd side for some people um it looks like it's going to be kind of a low-key shoujo -y kind of series. Although, what's the adult version of shoujo? I always forget. Is that Jose? Uh, or what? It looks like it's probably in. Yeah, it looks like it's probably in that ballpark. It does have my curiosity. Most Sentai items have the potential to get snapped up eventually when they go cheap enough. Um, but I, I would go ahead and rank it in curious because it's just a little higher than most. I'm in the curious uh, camp there. Oh, and to introduce our styles for those of you who are just first watching our channel, if you are, mm -hmm. welcome. Uh, of course, we are showing our level and uh, our level of interest in each of these releases. Mm -hmm. So uh, we could go with the top or the bottom, which is the only time that we don't round down uh, per se, well, uh, or round up uh, in this one case, because priority, which is a must get, we mm -hmm. both have to rank it the same, and same for hell no. So priority must get ASAP. I mean, if we got the money in the bank, we are purchasing this bad boy like now. Uh, or hell no, which is, I don't care if you're giving it to me for free. I don't want it. Okay, now how much are we sticking to that if we have the money to throw at it? Because uh, if that is the rubric... Not, not, in any, not in any theoretical thing, in a realistic sense, of course. In a realistic sense, okay, yeah. yeah. Not like it, it doesn't necessarily have to be in your account right now, but if it's like, right. okay, my next paycheck, I'm saving up to get this like right away. Right. Uh, that, that sort okay. of thing. Uh, sort okay. of like, okay, a good example for me would be the Gamera set. I didn't really have the money mm -hmm. to put away for it, but I put away money to make sure I got it pre-ordered right, because right. I want that set because I worry about Arrow going out of print. That's a good example. Right. Um, which will come so, to by, by his rubric, uh, by his rubric, we don't get a lot of priorities on here. No. <laughs> but, um, so, but there is yes, please, which means that once the price is right for us, we will yes. be getting this. There will be no. Uh, there will be no if. Oh yes, but it's there will be there. none. Yeah, it's just. <laughs> it's just the first price isn't necessarily there. We're not going right. to like get it right away. Curious right. is, yeah, it's there if the price is there, but it's more of an even bigger sale price. It's more of a you right. get it there. Meh like is, for example, I can set with after the rain. It's probably what retailing around like forty or fifty yeah, something like that right now. Yeah, so that one will probably get clicked up into yes, please, if I see it below about 15 or 16. Which is It'll get clicked you. into priority if it drops below 10. Yeah, <laughs> which again, that makes it a curious because if you come across right. it on a big sale and you're looking and say, hey, I remember right. that, and then you just grab it up because it's cheap. Mm -hmm. By that, by the same token, a dog's courage would probably have to be below ten before it hits yes, please. Uh, oh, yeah, meh would be a uh, well. If mm -hmm. it's like a dollar or someone was giving it to you, you might take right. it just to check it out. But you're not going to be seeking mm -hmm. this out, and it's not likely mm -hmm. a film that you're going to be like, hmm, I, I might pick this up. Curious is that thing mm -hmm. that's like you see in in there that's. You know, like Sentai's run on one of their sales and say, this looks fun. Whereas yeah. Yes, Please is more of a, I'm marking this down to definitely get. <laughs> right. uh, it's on your wish list, officially. Uh, there right. are a few of these that are Yes, Pleases for me. Um, mm -hmm. But any case, um, mm -hmm. with that being said, let's go on ahead to our next one, which mm -hmm. is... Uh, lost in my list stream here. There we go. Uh, an obvious yes, please, which is uh, almost love. Mm -hmm. Let's see here, which I don't think is in. Yeah, I didn't think it was. I think this was one that was 
There are a couple of them that aren't really available widely. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to have to seek this out on... Yep, I think I'm going to actually go to this. There we go. And even then, because I know what the uh, one looks like, it is that one. You don't even have a picture of it really up right yet, which uh, mm. is the Rotten Tomatoes site for Almost Love, which, mm. uh, let's see, a romantic comedy about a group of friends navigating love, life, and relationships as they reach the midpoint. At the heart of the story is Adam, a talented painter, now stuck ghost painting for successful contemporary artist Ravella Brewer. He and Markin... Uh, are at five year mark in their relationship. They don't have kids. They're not married, and they are face to face with the existential question: Is that all there is? Well, hmm. so we've got it's basically kind of this one of these introspective romantic comedies. Uh, right. You know, Patricia Clarkson, Scott Evans, and Augustus Prue, uh, Kate Walsh. So some decent names in this. It looks mm -hmm. okay. I, I to tell you the truth, I have very little interest in this film whatsoever. Uh, mm -hmm. So to me, it's a meh. I'll give it a meh. That's a I, I'm border. I'm border between meh and curious, but I wouldn't rush out for that one. Yeah, and then it rounds down. So there we go. <laughs> okay. So oh, I guess my next one, it, part five, really? Yeah, this is why it's like, yeah. What the heck? <laughs> okay, so next up we have apparently Black Clover season two, part five. Ah, Funimation, you're killing me. Uh, <laughs> this is the only series I've seen them do this with. This is like... Uh, it's probably, I mean, how long is this show? It's not super long, is it? Okay, see, that's like, season that's one. Me. I'm looking for the... They did, that, they did that with One Piece, but One Piece was super long. Okay. Yeah, well, it's 133 one episodes. Season two, I know it's on, oh, there it is. Yeah. But yeah, it's, okay, so it's 91 through 102. So that's like okay. 11 episodes. Eleven episode block. Okay, so as we've said before, our ratings deal more with the show itself than the actual edition. Yeah, the releases. And <laughs> they did do a complete season one edition, right? I think so. Actually, I can look. Which right gives now. me. I think we. I think we presented that just a week or two ago, which does give me hope that season two might get a complete release. Um, yep, there you go. And as long as I have that hope, I can rank this one better than I would have otherwise. But honestly, overall, I'm only curious about this show. I have no, it, no need to go out and get it. I am curious about it, but yeah, Funimation's tactics are putting it on the low end of curious. Yeah, I got no <laughs> real interest. Now, I admit, it's, it's funny that the whole season... Mm -hmm. Is like all it's only twenty dollars shy price wise of one part of season one. Uh. Really, essentially, I mean it's a little over twenty dollars, but not like twenty two. But still, that's uh. how, like only part one. It's like a what four or five parts a season. So you know, this is like a much better. If you're gonna get this, wait for it to come out in the season set. Wait for it. <laughs> because that's like a, a, a billion times better deal wise, and that's like oh. fifty one episodes. I mean, did you know Fizz was doing a collector's edition re release of Mizunokoku the manga? Yeah, you didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know that. That's very cool. So, <laughs> uh, my next one is also an anime, a cool anime. Astro Ooh. Anger, which is, I believe, what, Discotech or 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Easter Easter Star. Star. So, you know, it's one of those that is re releasing a lot, and they like to release a lot of old series. That's an old series, isn't it? It's a 26 episode series. Uh, it's not bad price wise. And uh, mm -hmm. let's see. A scourge is sweeping the galaxy. A scourge called the Blasters. These devious and handily numbered alien invaders conquer, devour, and destroy every civilized world they see. And now their sights are set on Earth. But worry not. I was like, worry not, good children, because Earth has a top secret countermeasure developed by Dr. Hoshi and the mm -hmm. International Science Police Headquarters. Nice. And there it is, right there. No, no, right there. That's him. So, <laughs> That's the big thing. Per, per a and n per a and n this is a show that aired in 72 and 73 so this is old school anime this is the early <laughs> not quite astro yeah. boy but on the tail of astro boy right so that's uh, still pretty cool mm -hmm. so let's see here it's a classic and i'm more on the curious yeah. end for it because uh, i'm just i'm saying. curious because of its classic status definitely all right, so you're next. So another show that, well, well, maybe not that one, but we were just moments ago talking about very, very long-running shows. Okay. We have a show that is up to its seventh season release, which honestly kind of surprises me a little bit. Um but it's a very well-regarded, well-acclaimed TV series called Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Uh, per, per IMDb, Brooklyn Nine-Nine follows the exploits of hilarious detective Jake Peralta and his diverse, lovable colleagues as they police the NYPD's 99th Precinct. Um, it's basically a, a cop comedy series starring Andy Samberg in the title role, and co-starring such individuals as Terry Crews, Jolo Trulio, and a um, whole bunch of other folks. Uh, <laughs> Pat Noswalt has a couple episodes. Katie Segal has a couple episodes. Tim Meadows is in there a few times. Stephen Root, Gina Gershon, Bradley Whitford. That's a pretty impressive overall cast. Kira Sedgwick's in there, Craig Robinson. Uh, I have heard really good things about it. I think, isn't this a Lorne Michaels production? <laughs> I think it is. Uh, so it's I'm like, not sure. Uh, I have no, I've had no interest in Brooklyn Nine-Nine, so it's not really um, a uh, thing that's there. I mean, to me, it's not a series I have any interest in. Yeah, well, it's one that caught my attention, but it's kind of been on the fringes of my attention, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and this fits squarely into the category of, ain't no way I'm picking it up season by season, but I will <laughs> definitely get the complete, complete edition. But I'm definitely curious about the series. And, yeah. Borderline, yes, please, for that collector's uh, complete edition. But, yeah, it's curious. Well, if you're almost to yes, please, that'll balance out with my meh to a curious. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so, yeah, cause that's one that if somebody were to give me the series, I would probably right. watch it. Or if they were like, right. yeah, here's like four seasons of it. Take a look at it. I'm like, okay, fine. Mm. I would watch it before I would judge it. Uh, but right. that's about all uh, I wouldn't be seeking out of <laughs> money for it. So um, let's see here. Where where, where was I? Ah. Basara. So let's see here. Yeah, I didn't include the complete name on that, but I did include it in your in your run for it. Um, there we go. Yeah, that's it. I don't know why I forgot about that one. <laughs> Uh, wait. What are you bringing up? Oh. Ah, yes. Which I believe is on Blu-ray here. It is indeed. So, 
set seven of Bleach is mm-hmm. coming out. Slowly but surely, they are releasing it all. And it's getting there. And I'll admit, if you want a more condensed version, they are releasing more episodes. This is much more condensed than the original version. (laughs) But uh, it's not exactly... I mean, for those of you who don't know what Bleach is, it's a series about a guy who ends up getting these powers of uh, what they call a Soul Reaper, or or basically Mm -hmm. from Reapers, uh, or Shinigami, Mm -hmm. or whatever you want to call them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, then he fights various demons or what they call hol- hollows, which are like mm-hmm. people who have died and their spirits kind of become, well, ghosted. So yeah. that's uh, that's the whole of it, really. It's uh, it's a fun enough shonen, and a mm-hmm. lot of people do like it. It's just very long. So, well, and also supposedly dropped off a steep cliff after the what constituted the first three volumes of oh, the original yeah. release. Well, it got lost, uh, and it's sort of like how a lot of these other series are that are shown mm-hmm. in, is it got mm-hmm. lost in filler hell. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's a sad thing, because there were some fun things. Like, the Visored story was mm-hmm. kind of fun. And, uh, I think it wasn't... A lot of that filler supposedly actually spearheaded by the creator himself. So it's yes, like, uh, which makes it so even we can blame more him. of a shame, yes. Yes. But, uh, but um, yeah. And then, of course, this one has uh, Shiho and Yoruichi on the cover, who's one of the more fun characters in the series. She is the cat. <laughs> so I believe, actually, this one might yeah. even be a filler arc area. So when as a... As a series itself, I consider Bleach a yes please series. Mm-hmm. And the fact that I own it and I and I have no uh, no interest in giving rid of it. Though if I had a lot of money, I'd probably try and condense it in these sets. Mm-hmm. But it's not quite condensed enough for me to do because you know. Yeah. Did you show, did you say what the episode count for this set was? It was like twenty four or so, wasn't it? Yeah, I think they're they're around that twenty three, twenty four rank. So let's see. Yeah. Here. Uh, you can do the math. So one sixty eight. I think it's twenty seven. Yeah. So they're doing a decent. It's split. a lot. Yeah. It's a lot better than it was. Yeah. And I'll admit, 14, this, yeah. this is the sort of release that pushes me up from curious to yes, please for this one. Huh. Yeah. So, there we go. We got a yes, please. Okay. And now you're going to have to help me find this next one because I don't know really what to look for. That's more of a Western. The title doesn't give much away. It's more of a Western. Well, at least that's what it looks like. I've got a first. Ah, there it is. There it is, yes. But that other one we keep seeing is what I look up when I try to IMDb it. Let me Uh, see if I can find... Film centers on a 14-year-old Chris, who after... Oh, here it is. Yeah. Here it is, yeah. Okay, so we've got... It's by Annie Silverstein. Um, 6.9... I have to admit... Uh, there's not a... It doesn't look bad. It doesn't look extraordinary. Um, so, uh, did it you want looks to read like, like a description for people? Well, in a near abandoned subdivision west of Houston, a wayward teen runs headlong into her equally willful and unforgiving neighbor, an aging bullfighter who's seen his best days in the arena. It's a collision that will change them both. Written and directed by Annie Silverstein. Um, uh, Looks like it could be pretty interesting, but I could hardly consider it a priority. I'll say curious. That's a myth for me, so all right, okay. there we go. <laughs> all right, that was easy. Yep, that was easy. <laughs> it's just it's one of those that I don't, yeah. ha- I have no interest in, even if it was like yeah. lower uh, like I was right. to find it in one of those five dollar bins. It's more like right. a, uh, I don't know. Right. Well, a lot of anime uh, back and forth. Yours, yours kind of yours is kind of a uh, push to the lower end, but you had one. Huh? 
There we go. Crusher <laughs> Joe the movie, which I thought was a boxing anime for some reason. Turns out to be more of a spacey anime, uh, which is, of course, you have a series behind it. She may still be a boxer in space. Space boxing, which uh, they have a... Actually, there was a movie about that, and I can't think of what the movie was called. Arena, I think, uh, which yeah. is a uh, movie about space boxing. Now... Eastern Star is uh, the one that released this, so of course you know this is historically uh, there, 83. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Crusher teams are hired for all kinds of reasons. The latest job seemed easy. Take a cryogenically frozen, terminally ill woman from a gang of criminals and transport her within 30 hours to a place where her illness can be treated. Yeah, that sounds easy. Uh, <laughs> only things go sideways where the unknown effect pulls Joe's ship out of warp, leaving him and his team adrift in space with a United Space Force battleship bearing down on them with, ac with accusations of piracy. I, don't, I mean, this looks mm. like one of those movies that's more of an adventure taking place in the world. I don't know right. if you really need to watch the series to get into this uh, movie uh, per mm -hmm. se. I mean, Crusher Joe is a definitely a part of a, a bigger series. Let's see. Mm -hmm. This is an OVA, which uh, apparently is being released later. So, you know, I mean, there's something more to this, and the OVA is not very long. So, yeah, it, it looks interesting. It's more on the curious end for me. I mean, it's not going to go on my wish list or anything, but if I saw it cheap enough, I'd definitely grab it up. All right. What do you say? Um, yeah, I'm curious. All right. So, all right, go for it. All right, all right. So, we'll go ahead and, um, you know, why not? Let's go ahead and just skip to the end here because this is one that I didn't have much immediate interest on that you had put on my list. Um, and, but... We'll look at it. This is a film called Wallflower. Oh, I gotta find it. And, there's so many of them. There's so many things called yeah. Wallflower. I know. Well, this one's pretty easy to tell because of the colorful. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'll be able to identify yeah. it when I see it. I think I don't think it's on any of these, so I think it's. Uh, hmm. uh, I'll I'll recognize it when I see it. Uh, well, while uh, you're. Looking that up, yeah, you know, that's not showing up at all, is it? Well, anyway. It's on here, somewhere. It, there's an IMDb uh, listing. Well, anyway, based on the untold story of Seattle's Capitol Hill Massacre. There you go. A, planning plan, a man planning to commit a mass shooting is befriended by an eccentric group of ravers and finds himself conflicted about his intentions. And this is apparently uh, directed by Jagger Gravening. I, get, I, I probably kind of messed that up pretty bad, but anyway. Uh, Co-stars, well, it stars David Call as Murderer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Co-star uh, as Strobe Rainbow is a girl played by Atsuka Okatsuka. That's pretty cool. Um, so basically, it looks interesting, it looks odd, it looks like something that might be a difficult watch. Um, it has my curiosity, but not much more than that, so I'll just say curious. Yeah, I'm more on the curious end. Uh, I'll admit, it, it mm -hmm. annoys me because it runs into all the other Wallflower movies out there. Yeah, right. Well, it's just like the other ones, all the bull movies. So, yeah. this one has a bit of complexity. Let's just say all the bull. What's that? Uh, which, oh wait, no, I'm, mm -hmm. not, I'm not there yet. I need to... I'm going to... I don't know why. Yeah! Why are you skipping that one? Well, I mean... City Hunter is getting a uh, continued uh, re-release um, right. for Season 1, Part 2. So they really are releasing this. Eastern Star is on a roll. And they're releasing, right. they really are re-releasing it pretty much as they did the DVDs. 
And if I was... If I didn't already like the collectible ones that I have, I would do this because they are probably way slimmer than the DVDs. Yeah. So this covers episodes 27 to 51. Already a pretty good deal right there. And gives you the uh, rest of season one. And of course this all is uh, Rhea Cyber, Cyber, I believe, who is a um, who is a gun for hire and he will take most jobs you have to like uh do the a particular thing and they will um and they will try and do it he is partnered uh, his pr former partner uh his former partner's daughter has ended up teaming up with him to do these things you know and, and his and his uh torturer also, uh, <laughs> as she as she tortures him and beats him repeatedly, but he sometimes deserves it because he is also a major pervert. Mm -hmm. it, it actually has a lot of Lupin the Third vibes to it, and it's a fun series. I really enjoy it. Uh, this sort of thing uh, would be a yes please for me because it is an awesome series. It's just, uh, but I probably wouldn't necessarily get it like right as it's coming out. I'd wait till it came down maybe a little bit, but I would definitely want that one. Yeah, I'm going with yes, please, on that. Um, the price is still a little high for me, but I definitely want to get it eventually. It's a worthwhile series to collect. I think on a sale, that would be worth snapping up. Right well, now. they're doing a sale right now, and I think it's on the sale, but the sale is kind of weak. Oh yeah. Um, Wait for their yeah. anniversary sale in July. I have a feeling that's going to be a big yeah. thing. Oh, and oh no, that's this one's not the one with the controversy. That's the next one. All right, so uh, you go. All right. Well, City Hunter has some controversy too because some of the uh, shenanigans that they were popular at that time are not so popular nowadays, but. So, speaking of controversial, we have a Criterion film this week. It's, if I recall correctly, a Soviet film uh, called Come and See. And this is a film that looks not exactly like a happy-go-lucky kind of movie. Well, he looks happy. <laughs> <laughs> he, looks, he looks so happy. I know, I know. Well, it's uh, the <laughs> film here. So the film is by Elem Klimov, and it came out in 1985, 143 minutes. Hmm. And, okay, so per criterion, this legendary film from Soviet director Elem Klimov is a census-shattering plunge into the dehumanizing horrors of war. As Nazi forces encroach on his small village in Belarusia, teenage Fliora, Alexei Kravchenko, in a searing depiction of anguish, eagerly joins the Soviet resistance. Rather than the adventure and glory he envisioned, what he finds is a waking nightmare of unimaginable carnage and cruelty Rendered with a feverish, otherworldly intensity by Klimov's subjective camera work and expressionistic sound design. Mm -hmm. Nearly blocked from being made by Soviet censors who took seven years to approve its script, Come and See is perhaps the most visceral, impossible to forget anti war film ever made. Oh, that's so, that's in other words, it's going to be hard to watch. That's a strong curious, definitely. Yes, but also, you got to look, they have done a decent job putting together some special features for this. Oh, that's a rare uh, <laughs> Yeah, they, they have a fair number of uh, well, inter they have interviews, a couple of documentaries. Um, you know, it's actually, it looks like a worthwhile collection to actually get. It doesn't look like one I particularly want to see, but I will probably have to get this, and I will. So it's definitely a yes, please. <laughs> I think it's not one I'm going to be putting on a wish list to get, but if I saw it and the price was right, I'd pick it up randomly probably. So it's <laughs> a curious end for me. 
<laughs> so there we go. All right. There we go. So now I'm getting to the one that I was going to talk about, okay. which is which has some controversy to it. Oh. Which I'm surprised you weren't like begging to have this on the list. Uh, Are you talking about the one where there was an image with absolutely nothing telling me what it was? There we yeah. Go. So yeah. what we're looking at is a series called. Uh, let's see here if I remember correctly. Um, Nezuko the series. Um, or as some yeah. people are, uh, as some people are actually uh, calling it, Demon Slayer or uh, Kimitsu no Yaiba, Volume One from Aniplex. Yes, as you can see a very fancy set. Uh, the yeah. reason why I say that is this character uh -huh. has been everywhere on the internet. Mm hmm. And my guess is, and this has been the, the, the type of image that you see constantly rolling about. Now, she's infected by a curse that's turning her into a, de into a demon. And mm -hmm. uh, you've basically got, uh, he's, the main character's trying to find out how to fight demons and also try to cure her. So, uh, her amazing cuteness level is one of the big things that has led her led this series to prominence in my mind, at least as popularity concerned on the internet. Though I've heard that it has some very solid action scenes. Right. And by the way, if you paid attention to the written list I sent you, you would notice Demon Slayer was written on it. Um, oh yeah. But uh, the. So it's a uh, it's actually quite well ranked. I would have grabbed this anyway if you had put it on your list because uh, I did want to talk about it for more than one reason. Matter of fact, something new came out today that it was supposed to have a double release. You were going to have Anaplex do the limited sets, and you were going to mm -hmm. have Funimation do the standard sets, which is huh. a very interesting way of doing it, and I like that concept. Mm -hmm. But Anaplex, it looks like there's rumors. Now, this is more controversial, but uh, they've pulled the Funimation set. Now, there are rumors that because there have been low levels of pre-orders, that this came from Anaplex themselves because they did not want to um, lower the uh, sales figures for their premium, like, hundred and something dollar sets. Oh, you mean the uh, the extra ten pieces they're going to move now that you can't buy it from Funimation? Yeah, that's that's their thoughts. Uh, I, I mean, this <sighs> is, but you know, this is the idea. Now, for me, this is a priority series. If I can get the money together, I will be getting it uh, because I don't know if they're going to release a Funimation, <laughs> and I don't know how many they've got. And this is such a high high level series when it comes to popularity in the community. It's one I've got uh -huh. to see and one I've got to get. So it is a priority for me. What would you put your level on? I'll be honest. This is one that I have definitely encountered in passing a lot, but hadn't really paid it any mind. I know it makes a lot of what's up. There's one thing that might affect your choice, too. I've uh -huh. heard that it is very bloody and gory at the beginning. And that is something that I had kind of gathered from what I had seen and heard. I'm still curious, but I can't go any higher than that. So this goes to a yes, please, and that. Okay. All right. So, moving on. <laughs> okay. So, moving on, we're looking at a film called Deer Skin. Mm. A man's obsession with his designer deerskin jacket causes him to blow his life savings and turn to cry. <laughs> you got to love that description. But what's more, this is what caught my attention. Oh, the director. Wow. Exactly. You got Jean Dujardin, the star of the, and Oscar nominated star of The Artist. In a film by Quentin Dupieux, 
the esteemed director of Wrong and Rubber. <laughs> okay, that actually is going on my wish list. I, yes. I, I've got to get a hold of that eventually. Yes. Okay. It, it ha it's apparently probably not his strongest film, but that pairing alone just is like, okay, I will have to see this. I like the description. It looks amusing. I cannot pay. Well, actually, that's not that expensive, is it? I was going to say, it's actually pretty affordable. It's only on DVD, so, you know, it's... Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. I don't know that I could really necessarily prioritize it, but I definitely want to say yes, please. Yeah, the only listing, even though I type in DVD, let me see if I type in Blu-ray, because it wouldn't come up for... Um, I think I only saw a listing for DVD Yeah, it's myself. only a DVD. Yeah. Which is kind of uh, sad, but it's definitely a yes, please, because I, I yeah. keep my eye on that, and uh, <laughs> I, I will probably stop, because I want to collect, he doesn't have many films out there. Uh, to, uh, no, but they are definitely worth watching. <laughs> yes, uh, they're amazing uh, things. Uh, let's see, it was, uh, the film was uh, the one about the killer tire. And right, there rubber. was the one about the dog. I think it was wrong, was it? Uh, wrong, yes. There, there's some odd films. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But well worth the time and effort to check out, uh, for sure. Yeah. Didn't, right. uh, am I remembering correctly that Wrong featured William Fitchner as a self-help guru? I feel like that. I feel like that. He he he. That was just a fun role, if I'm remembering correctly. <laughs> This is one What's I up? feel like we have uh, covered before, but I which can't. which one? The Etruscan smile? Yeah, yeah, we did this one a week or two ago. This is what so I guess it got. Am I the, is this Aquino Labar? Uh, I mean, it is. It is. Ah, that's because we we pulled it because it was you found it on the site. Uh, see, that's the thing is like the the, the release dates yeah. are there. We have to go all our one. So I'm just going to leave it with the Amazon release date. Um, all right. But well, again, Amazon Amazon is not apparently not listing most of Kino's releases, and that's kind of stupid. Because I'm going. To, this is a good point for me to insert here. Kino has, I think, five releases coming out this week per, per their site that didn't make our list. And I really do want to mention Ten Little Indians, the adaptation of the Agatha well, Christie novel. Well, let's take a quick look and see. So, Ten Little. Indians. I'll say DVD. Yeah. Oh, and I misspelled it. See, there it is. Really? And uh, well, that's not. That's not. July that's not the same. Fifth. That, that's okay, not the. Uh, that's not the edition. Right. That's the edition there. This one. Okay. So yeah. again, uh, June thirtieth. So I guess yeah. I'm. Uh, yeah, I guess then it is for next week. Hmm. Surprising yeah. that it wasn't but, on that, but yeah. I don't know. But that one, uh, just Herbert Lom and uh, Donald Pleasance in a Christie adaptation. That just sounds fun. <laughs> Again, it's kind of uh, weird because, like, because uh, the, the listings get weird for dates. Because mm -hmm. Kino's site will say one date, then it'll come yeah. another date. So it all depends. Well, on like I said, like I said, whenever I've seen a disconnect, if you click on the actual item. They have a different listing on the item page, and sometimes the date's different there. Uh, but, the problem yeah. is, if I start doing that, I'll have to start going to every production company's site, because each one. Kino Labar isn't the only one. Like, there's WB, yeah. there's Sony, there are a lot of these that might have different dates. Mm. It's, uh, it's just a lot of different research. Uh, that is. You would think Amazon would do those, though. Well, I mean, it's on their site, obviously. So you would think, you'd think yeah. that you would think that it would be under the uh, Joe Blow, uh, right? Because that is in there. But uh, and Truscan's mm. smile, I don't really have much to say about it. Um, we're covering no. it again because it was on the Kino Labar site for the last yeah. couple, and uh, so, which is weird. Oh well, whatever. It's, uh, I think wasn't our rating before curious. It yeah, sounds I think right. we can leave it there. That's yeah. the other thing. If we do it that way, we'll probably be covering it again. <laughs> but I'll okay. think about it as we go forward. It's just it adds another element that I have. Well, to this was this was not one of those. This was one you had on the list. 
So it was one you had on the list. It was like two or three weeks ago, or last. I don't remember when. But anyway, um, what's my next one? Got... Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have something called Evil. <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking about this one, but whatever. Hey, I uh, to... se- season yeah. one release. A skeptical female clinical psychologist joins a priest in training. And a blue-collar contractor as they investigate supposed miracles, demonic possession, and other extraordinary occurrences to see if there's a scientific explanation or something truly supernatural is at work. Co-stars Katya Herbers and a whole bunch of folks I'm not particularly familiar with. Uh, Christine Lottie, I know, I know that name. Kurt Fuller. Hmm. Okay, so there's a couple I know. Uh, The user review says X-Files meets the Exorcist, which is about what I would have guessed from that description. Uh, Could be interesting. This is not usually my wheelhouse, but and I've really heard almost nothing about the show. Have you you watched any of The Good Wife? It says it's from the same creators. Well, no, I, The Good Wife is one I'm uh, interested in. Um, eh, I'll give it a... I'm not even sure I'm that curious about it. I'll say meh. Yeah, that's not really one I have an interest in. Uh, like I say, we, we, will, we will definitely have ones, if we're covering all of them, we will definitely mm-hmm. have ones that we will not... Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just going to happen. Speaking of, <laughs> right. there's one called Narrow Margin. Uh-huh. Let's see if this one's the Kino release. Yep. And that one, uh, oh, there you go. Gene Hackman and Archer. Mm-hmm. Uh, from Peter Hi- Hyams, uh, the, accre- the acclaimed writer-director of Busting... Capricorn One, Outland, and the Star Chamber in 2010 comes the suspenseful remake of a classic 1952 film noir. Screen legend Gene Hackman uh, stars in an LA district uh, as an LA district attorney attempting to take an unwilling murder witness uh, to testify. Uh, I don't know. It's one of those things where she's trying to hide from the mob. It, yeah. It's okay. It's Gene Hackman, which, you know, yeah. Hackman. Uh, yeah. uh, I, uh, uh, I could give it a curious, but yeah, kind of a weak one. Yeah, it would have to be low on my... It's like if I saw it for like five bucks on a sale, I might mm-hmm. pick it up. I'd just like, maybe. Eh. All right. Mm-hmm. Your turn. Okay, so my next one is one I'm interested in, very interested in, called The Ghost of Peter Sellers. And this film came out a couple years ago, by uh, directed by Peter Medak. In 1973, Peter Sellers, one of the biggest comedy actors at the time, embarked on a pirate comedy for Columbia Pictures. He lost confidence with the film immediately and tried to sabotage it, first firing the producers after turning on his friend and the film's director, Peter Mehta. Despite an illustrious career and the passing of 43 years since the unraveling production, Mehta is still reeling from the disastrous experience and healing the wounds inflicted by Sellers in the film's failure. The Ghost of Peter Sellers is a comic tragic feature doc about what it takes to be a film director and survive your biggest disaster. Hmm. So, as a fan of Peter Sellers and a generally a fan of documentaries, I am very curious about this. It does yeah. sound unfortunate that Sellers, he, well, he was known for sometimes being difficult, but yeah. it's it's a shame to see the... Uh, some of the reasoning for that. But on the other hand, it could be fascinating to see some of the reasoning for that. And this is a pretty well-rated documentary, so it's definitely one I want to see. Um, I might even call this a yes, please. (laughs) 
I'm on the curious end uh, again. I'm not mm -hmm. sure what way now, so I guess it goes down to that. Okay. All right. So I guess it's up to me, and I'll be back in uh, in my alphabet again with uh, four kids and it. Maybe there was a reason why I skipped this one. <laughs> It certainly uh, does sound like a film. I remember the the the, the cover, which apparently mm -hmm. for kids and it is not being sold by Amazon. Mm -hmm. uh, DVD. <laughs> I remember the the ugly looking cover of it. So yeah, for kids. And it DVD. There it is. Look at that beautiful uh, looking cover yeah. right there. On Target mm -hmm. of all places, though, mm -hmm. is selling it. Whereas uh, apparently uh, Amazon and um, and Walmart are not. It, it, based on the best sell selling novel uh, for children and it. So when it says four children, of course, we're not like four children. Yeah. It's like four is spelled like the letter four, I mean, number four. Yeah. And uh, based on that, uh, let's see here. And, oh, and see. by it, they're not meaning that it. Yeah. <laughs> so it could be, uh, it could be it. <laughs> it certainly looks scary. Believe, uh, believe it or not, I think I actually read that book, but it was a long time ago. Uh, let's see here. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, best selling. I uh, see. Basically, a seaside holiday for kids, and from a mixed family, visit the beach where they discover a floppy-eared creature that grants their wishes. But there's a catch: the kids' adventure in rock climbing, pop stardom, and flying end promptly at sunset, leaving them in danger each time. Hmm. Well. I don't know. I mean, it is there. <laughs> I mean, I, it if it was given to me, I would probably be willing to watch it, which puts it as a meh for me. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm going to have to say meh. Such a, such a high uh, level right there. All right. <laughs> oh no, no, I definitely never. I definitely didn't read that. It's too recent. I swear I read something in middle school that had a similar premise. I just, I don't know. I can't even think about it. But anyway, so <laughs> next up, we have a series called Midnight Occult Civil Servants. I'm guessing that this is a Funimation release, I believe. Yeah, I had to, I was like, when you were like Civil Servants, I was like, what? I don't have it. I must have missed it. And then I realized, oh, I was, Midnight Occult Civil Servants, because you put Occult Civil Servant. Yeah. Uh, there you go. It's got a cool Man. looking number to it. And yes, it does. It caught my attention. I was like, that's a neat looking cover. I like this. Um, so we looked that up. Arada Miyako is a new government worker assigned to the Shinjuku Ward Office's Nighttime Regional Relations Department. Each of Tokyo's 23 wards has one such department, which were established to solve paranormal and occult related events. Arata can understand non-human speech that no one else understands, and he encounters a yokai at Shinjuku Goyen Park that calls him Abe no Seme, the name of an historical Japanese occultist and diviner. So, this sounds quite interesting. Sounds like maybe Shades of Evil mixed with Natsume's Book of Friends, maybe? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> um, I think it could be interesting. I'm definitely curious. Well, yeah, I'm kind of curious. Uh, it's not what I'm like going to be putting away for or anything, but definitely on the <laughs> curious end. Speaking of ones that I'm not probably going to put away for... Uh, we have uh, a force of nature. 
Ah. Uh. And see if this is it. Yep, there it is. So, again, this has uh, this has Mel Gibson in it. And it's about like uh, this job mm -hmm. I think is being pulled during a hurricane. I want to say it's a bank job or something. I think it's a heist movie done during a hurricane, oh, which I swear there was one done already <laughs> with this premise. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this time it's got uh, Mel Gibson in it and Kate Bosworth, so it's got decent actors and actresses mm -hmm. in it. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. I don't really have much to say. Is that on your, on your must-buy list? Uh, when the perfect crime meets the perfect storm. <laughs> um... I don't know. It sounds like a dime a dozen story there. Yeah. Uh, Geostorm. That's the one I'm thinking of. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to go with... Uh, I can't... I'm right on the border between Curious and Meh. See, I'm more on a um, Meh because I feel like I'm not going to okay. pick it up if I see it. <laughs> I'm go Meh. I would, I would almost assuredly pick it up if I found the Blu-ray for two bucks, but beyond that, I don't know. Yeah, that's more in the mail range. Right? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, okay. so, my next one is part of a long-running series based on some books, and I know that was a uh, unfortunately uh, vague description. Um, I think the books are, oh, this is a, a, an adaptation from that, I guess. Um, but the movie is called Miss Fisher and the Crypt of Tears. Huh? It's a TV special, actually. I like that title. I think that's a fun title. Uh, <laughs> and it stars S.C. E. Davis as Friend Fisher, uh, Miriam Margulies is a pretty big name there. Most of these people I'm not particularly familiar with. But um, this is, apparently it was an attempt to kind of go from TV specials into more of a cinematic role. And I'm not sure that it was as well received as they hoped. But the Miss Fisher series are quite popular. I am interested in them just in general. And I love the title of this particular installment. So definitely curious. <laughs> uh, I'm on a meh, maybe a little curious. I'll do that to leave it in curious for you. <laughs> uh, okay. It doesn't, doesn't strike my interest in the slightest. <laughs> But if I saw it, like, at the library for a short, like, a small amount or something like that. Right. Mm. All right, here's one that looks interesting. Uh, Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell, which is another way of talking about the Frankenstein book and novel. Uh, it's a Shout Factory release. Uh, looks mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, you know, Peter Cushing, uh, Shane Bryant, and Terrence mm -hmm. Fisher. Uh Again, I'm, you know, this, is, this looks like a, an interesting tale. It's just, you know, it's another take on a story that's been told many, 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 mm -hmm. many, many, many times. Mm -hmm. Many times. But uh, eh, still, it's, it's on the curious list. I mean, I've seen pieces of the movie, and it was okay. So I would say I'm on curious. What about you? I'm relatively curious myself. This was one that I feel like this is one that I've at least know, know a little bit by reputation, and uh, it looks interesting, so I'll go curious. Yeah, that next one on the list was where I uh, where I copied and pasted your uh, request. <laughs> uh, see, I see. So, my next, uh, I'm going to skip a couple here and go ahead and do one from Kina Lorber. And this is called Scenes from a Class Struggle in Beverly Hills. And from the Class Struggle in Beverly Hills. And this has uh, the IMDb one line. 
the widow's houseboy and the divorcee's chauffeur bet on which will bed the other's employer first. Uh, written and directed by Paul Bartel. We've got Jacqueline Bissett, Ray Sharkey, uh, Ed Begley Jr., Wallace Shawn, Paul Mzerski, et cetera, et cetera. That's an interesting cast. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, it's obviously satirical. Uh, <laughs> and um, from the same people behind Down and Out in Beverly Hills, apparently. Oh, that's good. Uh, okay. Yeah. So this looks interesting. It's not one that I am all that familiar with or that I really feel a burning desire to see right away. But I like the Kino releases, and it looks interesting. So I would say I'd definitely say curious. I can go with that. Yeah. All right. So um, one that was on the pickups last week. So if you wanted to see it. Mm. on the third goodbye partner oh now um this one is uh, where jegan apparently does turn on lupon and starts trying to hunt him down which is an interesting concept um mm. lupon is a long running series i think we've covered him many times before uh and it is a fun character i like all of the stuff and all of his stuff is a priority as you can tell because i already own it <laughs> <laughs> and uh i don't know which i know yours you don't have it as high as that though <laughs> well, it's definitely not priority, but most of the Lupin stuff I will mark is yes, please. All right, so. So we're up there with that. Uh, okay. Actually, before you move into something else, I'll tell you what. Why don't you go ahead mm-hmm. to take that extra slot, and I will, because you've got four other items that you said were not on the list from Kino. We'll go ahead and add those here. We won't rank them, but we'll at least show them. Uh, okay. So I guess. Let's bring up the Kino. There we are. Well, we already talked a little bit about Tin Little Indian, yeah. so we'll leave that. Um, there's a, I believe it's a documentary coming out called Stop. DVD only release. Let's see here. Stop making sense. Stop or my mom will shoot. Ha. Well, I did like Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. Let me see. I never did see that. I always loved the title, though. Kino. Uh, let's see here. Let's go here. Oh, if, if it helps at all, it's uh, about the whole stop and frisk practice. Um, stop. None. All right. Uh, all right. Because it would be on their site if it was. Well, you're on their Studio Classics link. I wonder if that's why. When you when when I do is I scroll to the bottom of the page, and at the bottom of the page they have all their new titles. Let's see here, Kino Bar Classics. There we go. Experience. There we go. Shinobu. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Shinobu. Uh, For example, you have to do is scroll to the bottom of the page. It makes it easy. Anyway, yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Yeah, so this is a documentary by Spencer Wolf, and it's um, basically, like I said, it kind of looks at the whole um, when I, the stop and, and frisk sort of idea. Um, it looks like it's a pretty good, pretty good. Um, what am I trying to say? <laughs> <Can't work>. <sighs> <laughs> but it follows three years in the life of David Arlicht, one of the four named plaintiffs in Floyd versus City of New York. Um, it looks like it's, especially nowadays, a very socially uh, appropriate uh, one to be looking at, I guess you could say. Um, yeah, so that's all I'd say on that one, really. <laughs> hmm. Let's see, new on home video. I'm just looking. That's not on there. All right, let's go to this. And what's the next one? Okay, what is the next one? 
we've got, um, well, again, uh, we've got a few of them on the list this week. Uh, just the wild, ones that aren't on the list. Wild Palms <laughs> is not on the list. Palms? Okay. Actually, let me see what see if it's on here, too, because I always like to check on there. Obviously, stop with not wild palms. Palms, yep. Yeah. All right. Is that it? What are we looking at here? Yes, that one. I see. That, okay, there you go. Yeah. Mm hmm. So, this one's a TV miniseries, apparently, uh, with some very high wattage uh, individuals. Catherine Bigelow did uh, one of the episodes, apparently. Uh, two uh, one episode. Keith Gordon directed two. Peter Hewitt did one. Phil Jonow did one. And stars Jim Belushi, Dana Delaney, Robert Legia, Kim Cattrall, Angie Dickinson, Ernie Hudson, BB Newworth, Nick Mancuso, David Warner, Ben Savage, Bob Gunton. That's a pretty intriguing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's a lot of intriguing people involved in this. And I believe it was produced by Oliver Stone or something along those lines. Um, and IMDb says a multinational corporation attempts to take over America while small pockets of resistance hold out against rampant technology. Hmm. Sounds fun. So, yeah. It's kind of neat seeing them put out miniseries, too. It would be nice probably if they hit a few of the uh, harder-to-get ones. But... Um, Hmm. Then next up. Oh, I see. It's like, like a billion of these. Okay. What's next up? up? So, what's the next on there? Next one, we've got. Yeah, we can probably skip Emma. I don't think that we need to cover the uh, Wiggles stuff on here. But I think it's hilarious they were releasing it. But they have a movie. Uh, you didn't have Promise of Dawn on the list, right? Um. Doesn't look like it. Yeah. I'm just looking to so see which one. Uh, which Emma is it? Just to show. Huh? Is it this? Yeah, one? Go to, no, 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 no. Emma is a character in Wiggles. That's why I say I think it's hilarious that they're doing Wiggles, but that's something totally different. Okay. It's an Australian kids programming. Um. Anyway. So. Um. So we've got uh, Promise at Dawn. And that is a movie starring Charlotte Gainsbourg and directed by Eric Barbier. Is that um, what are we looking at? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, Catherine McCormick is in there. Yeah. Let's see, IMDb. From his childhood in Poland to his adolescence in Nice to his years... Is a student in Paris and his tough training as a pilot during World War II. This tragic comedy tells a romantic story, etc., etc. Um, tragic comic, huh? <laughs> it, it, it looks French. <laughs> I don't know. It looks it looks like it could be pretty good. I don't uh, I don't know much about that one, but it looks good. Yeah, so um, what else we got. And then I think there was one more, Paracelsus, Paracelsus, whatever. Yeah, the 1943, P-A-R-A-C-E-L-S-U-S. -S. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there you go. And that is it right there. Yeah, yeah that's the Kino release, yeah. Oh, right there. Uh, this one is his Kino. Yeah. Yeah, that Boba Lista. There you go. <laughs> what was that? It says Kino on it. <laughs> yep, yep. There you go. Um, so maybe this is a re-release re from their vault or something, but this is a film from uh, a D.W. Paps film made under the Third Reich, apparently. 1943. Oh, wow. Interesting. By Ver stars Werner Krauss. That's definitely interesting to see how they do it. <laughs> Yeah. That would be, if nothing else, an interesting piece of history. Well, the Germans, mm -hmm. under the Third Reich, they really did, mm -hmm. they were, a lot of them were propaganda uh, because they were mm -hmm. controlled a lot like Soviet 
Tom's, but right. they also though they also pumped a lot of money into some projects because they wanted to be yeah. the best of the best. So some of these are extremely high budget, really amazing right. looking. I mean, like uh, what was it, My Struggle or whatever it was. Uh, there were several mm -hmm. pieces that were just amazingly technologically acting wise, all that. So it would not surprise right. me. Hmm. Well, well, there it is. <laughs> but I think that's all of them that were uh, that were not otherwise listed. So we're going to go um, to one that I know is going to be a priority for you. So uh, <laughs> we're going to Ninja Scroll the series. Oh, screw that series. Which I believe is actually the first time the series has been on there because they've had the other one that was related to it. But I don't recall oh, yeah. the series. Eastern Star is doing that of the further adventures of Jubei, which I know Ninja Scroll is probably your favorite anime movie of all time. Uh, but uh, essentially, if you're not familiar with Ninja it's Scroll, so classy. violence, rape. There you go. That's basically the whole yeah. of it. But it's a but it's very well done. Uh, as far as like uh, the action scenes are very well animated, it's uh, well, pretty impressive. Nice. But uh, for me, it's a uh, it's a yes, please. But that's because I, I am collecting all of it. But I'm not mm -hmm. going to buy it right away. <laughs> Here's the well, I'm I'm going to say meh. So that goes to curious. All right. Yes. <laughs> So, I can't say I would never own it. If it was given to me or I could get it for $1 or $2, I might get it. I might think I'm overpaying, but, you know. Ooh, ooh, so, next up, actually kind of in the same vein, in a sense, we have Sengoku Basara. And the, I guess, sequel series, The Last Party? Uh, one's the movie, I believe, and uh, one's the uh, series. That makes sense. And these are getting, uh, am I remembering correctly, are these essential? These are essentials releases, are they not? Uh, these are essentials. So you've got the uh, season one and two in the OVA, and then the movie, The Last Party. So I do like it, so it, it, but but it's all one except for the movie, right? Yeah, yeah. that's a, that's a good way to get the series yeah. there. Twenty six episodes. I mean, that's, yeah, and uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty uh, pretty interesting. I mean, they have like this other thing, yeah. like uh, the uh, little series, the uh, one through seven of yeah. those. Well, oh. Tosukabe Mototika Kun and Mori Kun. <laughs> um, am I correct? Let me see the movie here. I'm just curious about something. Oh, let's see, a movie. There's the movie. Okay, so the movie is $6 cheaper, but uh, it would have been hilarious if they were the same price. But yes, they are getting simultaneous essentials releases. <laughs> And I do admit, I do not yet own Sengoku Basara, and it is one that has been on my list. So, yeah, I'll definitely... C I can't decide if it should be yes, please, though. I'll probably go with... I'll probably go with Curious. All right. But it, it's borderline. Yeah. It's one that, if it came across the right price, I would get it. Yes. It's not one that yes. I can putting on a list of any sort it's just kind of right. it's been on my radar but very like on the outskirts if that makes sense right right so my next is a uh, interesting film called not for publication so right not for public another uh, kino release if i recall correctly that is a blu-ray there for that mm -hmm. there it is and uh, it looked interesting. It's more of a scandal uh, type, series, type movie. Uh, I did mm -hmm. look these up before I went into them, but just I forgot some of these things. Uh, with Nancy mm -hmm. Allen and David Naughton. I mean, it looks entertaining enough. I, I've got I like no, the cover. Yeah, I've got no uh, dislike for it. I wouldn't buy it for 18 bucks, But... Uh, Still looks okay. I, I'm at a little curious to meh on it. I'm, I'm curious. 
All right, we'll leave it at that then. All okay. right, you're next up. So, um, the, uh, the uh, title of the next one's kind of long, so it's kind of, uh, it's called The Short History of the Long Road. Stars uh, Maggie Siff and Sabrina Carpenter, and perhaps most notably Danny Trejo. That right there is half the reason I put it on the list. <laughs> and Rusty Swimmer. But um, so basically, written and directed by Annie Sim Simon Kennedy. We got a lot of uh, writer directors this time around. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so basically, for teenage Nola, Sabrina Carpenter, home is the open road. Her self-reliant father, Stephen Ogg, is her anchor in a life of transience. The pair crisscrosses the United States in a lovingly refurbished RV, re relishing their independence and making ends meet by doing odd jobs. The shocking rupture, though, casts Nola out on her own. She makes her way to Albuquerque, New Mexico, in search of a mother she never knew. When her mother home unexpectedly breaks down, she forges a bond with an auto body shop owner, Danny Trejo, and senses the possibility of mooring her ship in this storm. It, uh, part of this reminded me a little bit of the uh, movie uh, Leave No Trace, which was a really great film, by the way. Um, but it looks interesting. Anything with Danny Trejo gets my vote for at least one viewing. Uh, <laughs> so um, I'm going to go with Curious. Pretty strong Curious, but Curious. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Oh. What's up? I gave you the center. I don't think I gave anybody the center. Oh, no, no, I gave you the center. Okay. Yeah, I've got the center on here. I yeah. think I think there's three left for each of us, right? Yeah, so I've got... Uh, this one here is, of course, a classic. Of course. I mean, it's called Orca, oh. Killer Whale. Yeah, I've, been, I, I've, I've always thought of that as a classic. Uh, I, I have to admit, this one is intriguing. Basically, uh, some uh, people end up killing this uh, killer whale's mate, and then it decides it's going to get revenge. Okay. Uh, that's, that's pretty kind of, straightforward. Yeah, it is straightforward. I like that. It's, uh, it's one that uh, is on my radar. It's a shout release. Um, right. I can't and say it's a it's a a priority because a priority would mean I want to pay twenty six dollars for it, which would be a. Nice I am fascinated though by the cast. We got Richard Harris, Charlotte Rampling, Bo Derek, Keenan Wynn, Robert Carradine. It's actually <laughs> That's a pretty... it's a pretty big classic when it comes to those types of horror films. Right. I, I, I wasn't lying in that aspect. It's just a classic <laughs> in a different way. So for right. me, it's a yes, please. But I don't know where you would be on that. <laughs> I I have to admit the cover kind of threw me. I love how cheesy it is. But on the <laughs> other hand, I was like, oh, my God. Uh, I'm going to go with Curious. I am definitely Curious. <laughs> All right. So you're going. Okay. Well, next up we have the aforementioned The Sinner. Uh, which is a film series. This is a season three release, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got a series, a, a drama, crime drama, mystery series, co-produced, co I believe, by Jessica Biel, if I'm remembering correctly. Yep, right there. Bill, Bill Pullman stars, which is kind of cool, kind of cool. Um, and you got uh, so, what I don't remember what I said. I meant to say Jessica Beale, but I don't know what I said. Yeah. Anyway, and she actually starred, I think, in season one or maybe two. Uh, Carrie Coon apparently episode starred in the following season. Um, and then you got in a number. Of, Tracy Letts was in multiple episodes. Jessica Hecht. Um, other folks, Catherine Erb, 
So that's a very intriguing cast. Um, I've heard generally good things about this. The IMDb rating is kind of, uh, or description is interesting. Anthology series that examines how and why ordinary people commit brutal crimes. Hmm. Um, I kind of like series like that that examine the, the hows and the whys. Like, to me, that sounds kind of like the vein that Hell Girl and Death Parade were in, and I think that's kind of fun. So, yeah, this is definitely a high curious. It might become a yes, please, if they do a complete series collection, but, you know, me, I, I don't want to get them individually. <laughs> well, this is more yeah. of a low curious for me. Uh, it's a little uh-huh. bit better than some of the other stuff, like Evil, on there. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm willing to look at that. So okay. we've got sort of a sci-fi a kind of a attempt, I guess, to um, market on the plague going on right now. Uh, and Redcon 1, mm-hmm. which uh, in truth, it looks interesting enough because apparently there's a big plague. It's destroyed the world and mm-hmm. they found a cure. So these guys are going to get the cure, but there's some, uh, you know, uh, as they said, you know, a badass British mashup of the raid and Twenty Eight Weeks Later. Hmm. So it's gonna be. It's. I. I don't know. It's one of those that looks amusing to me. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be very good. Uh, but it's one that it does look entertaining. So yeah, hmm. it's on my curiosity deal. Okay. Oh, well, I'm going to have to go meh. All right. So. I'm meh, but meh. <laughs> All right. My next one's simple because a week or two ago we actually covered the series, but now Sentai is putting out a limited edition box set for Run With The Wind. As I said before, it's a highly acclaimed series. I do want to see it. I love me some limited edition sets from Sentai. I will not pay full price for this, but it's definitely a yes, please, otherwise. Yeah, let's take a look at all these things you get with it, these lovely right. uh, stuffs. It's not a, it's not really a very in-depth one, it looks like. Right, but there's one reason why I'm more than willing to wait for the price to come down, but yeah. I mean, it's decent size, yeah. decent enough art box, yeah. and I'm kind of glad to see yeah. that. I mean, those giant art boxes are difficult I do like that. Mm. She got that little uh, thing where it just uh, uh, it animates yeah. them. So that's kind of interesting. Good. It's about like long, like long, ter- like long term running. It's about runners, mm. high school right. track teams. So right. yeah. So for me, it's a curious. So that goes down to Great. that. All right. All right. My last one is called Street Survivors. Uh huh. You can tell I'm excited. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, it actually has a kind of a documentary element of it, like uh, the, because uh, uh, you know, it's about the uh, plane crash with Leonard Skinner and the, you know, the drummer, and a lot of the, the background for that uh, was gotten, so it was mm-hmm. kind of a dramatization of that. Mm-hmm. So there is some interest in it, like if it, even if it's just a mild interest. Mm-hmm. But uh, sometimes it's, you know, it's good to check it out and see their their story mm-hmm. and where they go to it. It's even got a soundtrack CD. Oh, nice. Which uh, I'm guessing Leonard Skinner is, uh, is prominent on the soundtrack. Oh, one would think. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, that's kind of cool. It's got my curiosity up. Yeah. I'm definitely curious about this, and for something about it, just, I don't know, I can't remember if this is a project I would heard about or not, but something about it just makes me worried. I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it. <laughs> but, you know, because like some, some of these things, you kind of feel like, it, well, a lot of it is in the execution. It could be good or it could be horribly horribly wrong you know but i'll, I'll give it a curious okay mm-hmm. yeah. 
Alrighty. Okay. And the last one, I'm not really sure that it was best to uh, save Anaplex for last, but yeah, whatever. And we're seeing Anaplex release a movie called Rascal Does Not Dream of a Dreaming Girl which is the sequel to Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai, which Aniplex has already released. Um, I am very, very curious about this. I heard excellent things about the series, really excellent things about the series, which, as you can see, is quite pricey. Um, and the movie is supposedly a really great continuation of the story. If money were no object, this would clearly be a priority listing for me. But it's Anaplex, which by definition, it can go no higher than yes, please. But definitely yes, please. Uh, because it is... Because there's extra baggage involved with it, and it's Anaplex, and I have yet to see it, I have a hands-off rule when it comes to Anaplex. So, uh, <laughs> to me, it's on the meh side, because, again, unless it went down below, below, or somebody would shove it in front of my face and show it to me, I would stay as far away from it as possible to avoid the to avoid even the chance that I might try and buy it. Because again, <laughs> because this involves multiple purchases for me, and they're, they're high grades, so that would round it. It would take this down, but take this up, so it'd go to curious. All right. Uh, so a lot of curiosities this week. Uh, a little bit more meh than we have of yes, please, but uh, okay. not too bad this time around. Okay. I think that's everything, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So hey, not bad. Yeah. Uh, uh, so otherwise, I guess that's it for our uh, entertainment today. Hit that like yeah. button. And of course, you can also subscribe if you are so. Uh, interested we we always love having new subscribers and of course share that uh, i'll try and add the kino labar to my uh things i have this bad feeling i'm going to start adding every studio in order to get all the releases and even then i'm missing missing some it's just as amazing how, how little people keep up with these things but i guess that's why, why you're trying to come to us because we're trying to consolidate all those different sources Right. I mean, I wouldn't have known about deer skin. <laughs> <laughs> deer, it looks great. <laughs> so we'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.